Welcome to the Crouch Ranch, guys. It's Thursday, and that means you get your solo live with me. I'm sorry, I'm running a little bit behind today. Um, but today's topic, um, I'm just gonna briefly go over this today. Um, I like to read a lot of different articles and skim different things, and um, I watch a lot of documentaries on the topic as well. Um, things having to do with industrial farming and where your food comes from and what you're putting in your body and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I was doing some research and I had run across an article and I had remembered seeing a, a documentary on this topic a while ago. Um, and they were talking about the dead zone off the Gulf Coast and how they're seeing the impact on the marine life um, in that area due to farming practices and the runoff because everything sort of slides down into that gulf because of where everything sort of matriculates down but um that dead zone uh, is believed to be um caused largely and i've included some links um to some of the little articles and things that i had read um just briefly to, to give you like a quick overview. Those aren't the real in-depth ones, but those kind of give you a good overview of what they're referring to as far as what some of the practices are with the industrial farming and why that's affecting the Gulf and the dead zone and why plant life in the ocean and, you know, marine life is important to us uh, bipeds. But, um, which most of us know, I mean, obviously, the water needs to be oxygenated for the plants to survive. And if the plants aren't surviving, then the little fish aren't surviving. If the little fish aren't surviving, then the big fish aren't surviving. And then, you know, it's, we call that an ecosystem, right? Everything has to be balanced. And if something gets tipped too far, something is going to get affected. And so the way that we have affected it is this mass production of mostly cattle um, is what seems to be what they think is affecting it the most um, because they just will concentrate a group of cattle and all that manure and all of that stuff <laughs> for lack of a better word um, kind of just gets you know drifting down there and some of that is because we do consume too much of just about everything um, here and some of that, I'm not ignoring you guys, I'm sorry, I'm getting through my spiel first. Um, and then, um, you know, with that need, that all those government subsidies for, for beef, for, for cattle, um, you know, farmers were doing bigger and bigger cattle farms in the same areas. And the problem is, is that the land can't recover. The, the nutrition and the nutrients in the soil isn't being replenished. By rotating your crops, and your livestock with the correct things after each other because what it takes and what it replenishes with the soil creates a better ecosystem we're actually losing i forget what the um i'll have to look it up and, and tell you guys um but there was a forget exactly what the term was but it had to do with basically the 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 dirt eroding away and dying and going away because of the some of the farming practices in the industrialized uh, farming situations um so you know that being ramped back on a smaller scale and being done correctly and rotated which is better for the animals better for the plants and better for the environment all of those things also help keep you know things like those gmo plants that nobody wants <laughs> at least i don't want them um those plants partly came out of necessity because of them needing those plants to survive under certain conditions all of the time and certain pests and things that they were um, going to be possibly attacked by that they were trying to guard them against. But the problem is, is there's, there's other things that you can do. There's other plants that you can plant near certain plants, other crops, rotating them different times of years, different times of the year rather will affect those plants survival and farmers back in the day they knew that they knew to rotate their crops and to to you know change what they grew from one time of the year to another from one season to the next in order to keep their land healthy so that they would continue to have 
bountiful harvests of whatever the crop was that season year after year you know just like rotating your cattle through and then you know planting afterwards and you know all of that like you you have to be a good steward of the earth in that sense because it's starting to affect other things because of all this mass production so like i said i did include some of the links just briefly touching on that today just i don't want to like I don't want to rant every week, but I just, I want to, um, it's something that I feel very passionately about. It's something that is one of the reasons why we started this whole ranch thing, because when I get stuck on something, Mike will tell you, when I get stuck on something, I get really stuck on it. And so, um, it kind of becomes my thing. So this whole idea of being an industrial vegan, of doing it myself, of thumbing my nose at the at the industry, so to speak, and the way that they're doing it and how bad it is for the animals, how bad it is for the environment and how bad it is for us. Um, and taking kind of control of what we're doing, you know, raising our own things and providing it to people, you know, who, aren't able to raise it themselves or don't want to raise it themselves, but at least they can take comfort in the fact that it's being done old school, traditional. It's good for you. It's good for the environment. It's the best way for the animal, all of those things. So like I said, I included a couple links there in the description so you can check that out. So, oh really? That's funny. That's funny. WT Farm Girl um, was just saying how I missed the name again now, but um, somebody else just did, did a, a talk about that, but that's funny. Well, no, I think that um, I think that because there's certain things out here that are heavily farmed, um, you know, but you know, you have that same problem in the Midwest. There's certain things that are just heavily farmed. I mean, it's all over. There's certain areas that farm certain things and they don't rotate their crops, but there's new farms that are not new, but some of the old school farms that are kind of coming back that are starting to take care of that and, and deal with that a little bit better. But I have heard of that uh, Taz man. He's asking if um, there's still, not so much I haven't heard of college students, with interns going to farms and, and helping save the soil. Um, I heard it wasn't college students and I can't remember where they were from, but I did hear mumblings about that or read something about it at one point. I don't, I want to say it wasn't college students or interns, but, um, but where they were working on figuring out some of those environmental issues with, with farming and crops and getting your soil healthy again. Um, there's also those, um, those programs where you can go to different farms and learn different uh, trades and tasks and things on the farm um, and and help the idea being that in, within that program that you're kind of also helping share information and how to do things the old way you know so <laughs> well thank you Jesus <laughs> Thank you. Hi, hi, John. So yeah, sorry, I missed a lot of your comments, but that's my rant for today. But because um, I know I've, I, I feel very strongly about that whole thing. And that's why, you know, I kind of stopped us from eating meat for a while before we started raising our own because I was like, I'm not buying this crap anymore. Like, I don't want to be, I want no part of this <laughs> on any level. And it wasn't that I'm morally opposed to eating meat. I just didn't like what the options were. So now I feel like, you know, I know what's going into these chickens. I know what's going into this pig. I know what's going into these turkeys. Like if I raised it or I traded with somebody that I know raised it well, or I bought it locally with a similar, you know, similar situation, then I feel confident in that. You know, so. Exactly, dig, dig in. Yes, too much of anything runs into the, runs off into the water supply. So, well, he was just asking about the growing season. So I don't grow stuff. Um, <clears throat> I don't do plants very much. I am not the plant person. 
Uh, Mike is the plant person. I am the animal person. I, you give me a half dead, like chick that you think is going to die. And I'll bring that bird back to life. I am the chicken whisperer. I can, I'm like, I can make poultry flourish. Like that is my gift. <laughs> like I'm really good with animals. Like you give me an animal that is like on its last legs and I will get a few more years out of it. Like it's my gift. And I love animals, but the plants, I don't have the patience for them. I don't like, I do them when I have to, but I, and I like to eat vegetables, but I don't like the process of growing them myself, but Mike totally digs that, no pun intended. But, um, and he's not so much into like the raising of the animals like I am. So, you know, it works out. It's like, you know, it's the yin and the yang, it works. So I have no idea how long the growing season is because that's not my, that's, I can tell you when, when I do my birds, when I need them to incubate, when I need the, the birds to hatch by, when I need to start butchering by, like I can tell you all that, but I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't have any idea when anything's gonna bloom because <clears throat> I don't, I don't care enough to really pay attention to it in great detail, which I know sounds terrible, but it's sort of like, you know, I don't, it's just not my, it's not my thing, so, you know. <laughs> You're, you're right, Tasman, that is a huge problem. And that's that's what's great right now is it's sort of like a reverse revolution. You're seeing more and more small farms popping up, doing it the old way, you know, um, and shrinking things back down to a realistic size because things got so big, so big, so big, and we need to shrink it back down to a point where it's manageable and makes sense for the environment and makes sense for getting zero notifications. I know. See, and I even posted, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dwayne. I know some of you guys are not getting notifications. So what I've been doing, FYI, I'm trying to get on at one o'clock on Thursdays as close as I can today. I was very, very behind because it took me a minute to get this set up. It was not cooperating. Um, so I was running about 20 minutes behind schedule <laughs> to get online, but I also posted it as a post on the YouTube channel itself. Um, and then I also posted it on our Instagram, our Twitter and our Facebook. All of them are at the Crouch Ranch. Um, so it, it kind of works pretty well. Hi, YouTube connected. Yes, we do. We do sell our poultry. <laughs> well, if they're chicks, I, and I'm not super awesome with waterfowl, never claimed to be. Poultry, I'm great with. Waterfowl, I haven't delved into that yet. Um, so I don't have much experience with ducks yet. So I can't help you much on that there, Brady. But um, if they're female, then you'll have eggs. If they're drakes, then um, you won't have eggs. If you got some of each, then you'll have babies. Get it? There you go. So, okay. Um, well, we can't ship them. So we really just sell locally. Um, we really do and we sell out every time. Um, we keep it small, we keep it local. So, um, and that's part of what we're trying to do um, is just change our, if everybody worked in their own little area to the best that they could, find somebody local to you that raises their own poultry that you can, um, I was actually reading, I was looking into, um, you know, everybody knows what spatchcocking is when you're butchering a bird where you basically split it down the side. It's almost like butterflying it essentially, but you can lay them flat so you can fit more whole birds in a space. So if you spatchcock your birds and freeze them, you can stack a bunch of birds in your freezer that would last you for several months, well before, I mean, that, that meat and chicken meat in the freezer is good for like a year. So, I mean, you'd be good to go for quite a while, even if, you know, let's say the local place for you to get them would be, you know, an hour away or whatever. It would be worth your trip at that point to go stock up on what you needed and bring it back, make a little afternoon of it or whatever, you know? 
Um, so that would be my recommendation on that. But uh, exactly. See, that's a good one. Well, no, because that's it's it's very different, Jesus. So that's very different. Um, you know, we're still growing. Um, we kind of did things a little backwards, essentially, in the sense that you know we really predominantly are just focusing on our poultry right now. So, um, so no, GMO farming has not affected us in that sense, um, but it affects everything around us. So, you know, that's why you have to be so diligent about what you're feeding your animals, um, that they're on a good quality non-GMO feed, um, no corn, no soy, all of that stuff. So. Sorry guys, I'm trying to keep up with your comments here and sorely lacking. <laughs> yeah, so Mike's at work. That's why I do these solo on Thursdays. Um, he's at work. We'll be going live on Sunday together, but our Sunday live will probably be um, earlier than normal this week, FYI, because I gotta take Frankie uh, down the hill to a birthday party. So um, we won't be on at one o'clock. We'll probably be more like 1130-ish. <laughs> so, oh, well, if there was an earthquake today, I did not feel it. But you know what? Most native Californians don't get out of bed for anything less than a 6.5. So 5.5 would be like, unless it was like lasted for a long time, most people wouldn't notice it. So it's, I mean, we see all the time, we get notifications like there was an earthquake and we're like, there was? Oh, I must've slept through it. It was at three in the morning. Mm. Shake, rattle and roll, baby. So it's no biggie. We're all okay, you know? I didn't even know what happened, so I guess we're good. So other exciting news, you guys, changing topics, changing gears, I know. Um, our buddy Scott Southworth, and I have actually um, tagged him in the uh, description as well of the video with his, um, his page. Um, he's awesome. He actually, we know him from back in the day when I was waitressing and bartending um, and when Mike was playing in the bars as well. Um, and he actually played at our uh, wedding reception. Um, so we go back a ways. We've known Scott for a long time and he no longer lives here. He lives in Nashville and um, he's been cranking out amazing music and doing the singer songwriter thing and all kinds of cool stuff. And in fact, I actually, God, maybe a year, year and a half ago now, um, I, he had me choreograph a, a line dance for the people in his music video to do. So that was kind of cool. Um, but um, anyway, there's a link to his page so you can go check out all his stuff and, and his music and stuff. But we talked to him last night because I had the brilliant idea, since Mike has a limited amount of recorded music that's um, of, a, of a good enough quality that we could use in the videos, um, I thought, well, why don't we ask Scott? So great, Scott. He said yes. And um, so we'll be dotting all the I's and crossing the T's on that, but we'll be able to use some of his, his music and post his links for stuff and send you guys over to him to check out his cool page. And he's got um, his, his videos, which I'm sure there's a link if you go to his um, website, I'm sure there's a link for um, his YouTube. Um, I think his videos are posted on YouTube. I remember one of them at least was. Um, but I'm not sure where I viewed them because I think I went through his Facebook page when I looked on them. But um, so definitely you're gonna, you guys are gonna love Scott. He's great. So his music's gonna be in there, um, which is really cool. A little extra thing that we get some some different sounds in those in those videos. Not that I don't love Mike's music, but we've been using the same CD of songs for every video now and. I think it would be nice to have something different. So, and then Mike's also talking about finishing a couple songs and getting into the local recording studio and and doing that so that he has those to use. But you know, we'll see. At least this is like a right now thing, and Mike going to actually finish songs and record it might take a little bit longer than than that. So we'll see. Um, 
Yes, David, we are planning on doing some merchandise. I actually, oh, I should have grabbed them and brought them in here. So I had just two made for Mike for his birthday of their whiskey glasses and my friend does like glass etchings. And so um, she did the Crouch Ranch and um, uh, TCR on the other side um, etched in the glass. So, but we are talking about doing shirts. We are talking about um, koozies and all that. So we'll probably start small and then, you know, as the interest and as the channel grows, um, increase it and, and do all that good stuff. So we'll see. So I'm excited about that because it's, it's, it's good. That'll be fun. So I'm super excited about the whole thing with Scott. That's going to be awesome. So make sure you guys go check out his channel um, and check out his website. Um, <laughs> well, we'll be doing one on Sundays. We usually do them on, like I said, on Thursdays and Sundays. So we'll see. But, um, but yeah, and then we've got some, we're going to do some, and I know some people may not like this idea, but <laughs> um, we're going to be doing part of what I mentioned in our last live feed about we have something exciting that we're potentially going to be doing and we'll see what comes of it. Um, there's going to be um, uh, some, uh, Mike's going to do some photo shoot tonight and we're going to do a little bit of um, some video for a submission video for something. So that could potentially be a lot of fun and, and reach a lot of people. So we'll see how that goes. But that's all I'm going to say about that for now. I'm just going to keep giving it to you in drips and drabs until I'm ready to like post it. <laughs> but there it is for now. So let's see. Thank you guys. Thank you. So, okay. I know. I feel like I just, oh, that was a lot. It was kind of all over the place. But my lives always are because I always have a lot to cover. So, all right, guys. So th that'll be fun. So let's see. Don't forget, check out Scott's site. Um, I posted his link in the comments, www.scottsouthworth.com, and I think his YouTube is probably something the same. Scott Southworth, YouTube, whatever. Go check out his music, because we're going to be putting those in um, our videos um, once we get all the whatever YouTube criteria thing filled out. Mike's got all that stuff that we got to do. Um, so... Yes, we do, James. And actually, he was asking if we free range our birds. We do. Um, my laying hens are free ranged in a certain area, but then my meat birds are pastured in a tractor so that they're protected from the hawks and the coyotes and whatever other critters would want to get out there and get them. So gotta, you got to protect them a little bit. So, Oh, I would love that, Ronald. You're right. Flink. We need pink flamingos with our logo on it. I would rock that shirt like on the daily. Um, <laughs> I would definitely, but yeah, no, I'm excited. I was actually talking to one of my friends about at least just getting a couple made for Mike and I to wear just to kind of at least get a rough idea and get it done quickly so that then when we're ready to like mass produce them or let you guys kind of decide what you think about the logo or whatever. So we'll see how that goes, but um, Anyway, so yes, we are in, <laughs> call me Fornia, I guess. All right. So all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with that. So buy locally, buy from your local farmer, know where your food is coming from, guys, if you can't raise it or grow it yourself. Um, stay educated, stay vigilant on what's in your food, read labels, read packages, and whenever possible, don't eat things that are labeled or have packages because that means it's been processed. Um, Make sure you check out our Instagram uh, and Twitter and Facebook. All three of them are at the Crouch Ranch or just on Facebook is the Crouch Ranch. But because um, I don't know why they got to make it difficult for me. They got to make it crazy. Um, so check that out. Um, and then um, we've kicked one around. We don't officially have a logo yet, Brady, but we, we have an idea. But it varies drastically. I have an idea and he has an idea. They're very different. <laughs> so we'll see who wins. Um, maybe we'll have one of each made and then have you guys vote on which one you like better, my design or his design. And then we won't tell you which is which, so there won't be any bias. That's the way to do that. So make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell so that in theory you get the notifications. I know. 
Um, but, um, <laughs> oh, I have pink flamingo tattoos. Yeah, I've already got like, what, two of those. Yeah, no, I'm good. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you with that. I've got other stuff to do now on to other things and all of that good stuff. So hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. We will see you on Sunday for our next live. We will probably do that at about 1130-ish, I'm thinking. Potentially somewhere between 11 and 1130-ish. Um, we will probably do that. So I hope you guys all have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you in a few days then.